is up people YouTube, it is I, Super Mario Zilla, or you can call me Vinny, and today we're gonna take a look at the Chogokin Tamashi Mix Orai no Yoshi Mecha Godzilla 1993 poster version. Fucking hell, that's a long title. This version of Mechagodzilla is based off the poster illustrated by the great Orai Noriyoshi, and is a concept design that did not make it into the final movie, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. And this Mechagodzilla has some cool gimmicks, and can transform into different vehicles. And the full transformation you're seeing right now. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so first let's take a look at the vehicles, then the vehicle's articulation, then the transformations. Sounds good? Good. First to Garuda. This big battleship looks really good and is hiding Mechagodzilla's head. This thing looks very menacing, it looks very good and very ferocious. And the ferocious look this thing has is captured very nicely. The paint is pretty clean and the main color of the vehicles is a not so shiny silver. And admittedly a wash could have been used to make it pop a little bit more, but that's a case of me just nitpicking. The Gabuda is very cool looking. Here's a quick look at the articulation for this plane. As you can see, it's decently posable on its own. The Garuda gets one accessory, a flight stand. And this is really the only accessory that comes with this, not counting the manga. Next is the Gandalva, which is like a major tank, kind of. It's a very bizarre design, not gonna lie. However, it does look pretty powerful, I'll give it that, but... I don't know, seeing this thing just screams weird. Here's a quick look at this thing's articulation, and I don't know why you would pose the arms in any way on this, because... Well, creepiness. Next up is the Naga, a very powerful tank-like looking thing. It looks awesome. The details, once again, are captured really nicely. The paint job is clean. Uh, the missiles are, are back of Godzilla's toes. And the little kneecaps are little cannons. So, he is ready for battle. Anywhere, anytime. Here's a quick look at the Naga's articulation. And, well, yeah. So yeah, the Naga is pretty cool. There are two transformations. Allow me to show you one transformation that isn't Mechagodzilla. Enjoy some stock music. Here we have the Gandalva combined with the Naga. It looks awesome. More powerful looking than the two vehicles by themselves. This thing can take on Godzilla and kick his ass any day of the week. Anyway, allow me to show you how you transform all three of these vehicles into Mecha Godzilla. However, I'll also be telling you to avoid a step to reduce breakage. Because chest panel is obvious. Enjoy a little montage. <laughs>
instruction states to rotate this piece for the neck to click in place. Don't do this. I'll explain later. don't recommend to attach the tail, I attach it for security reasons so the chest panels don't break because of gravity. The choice is yours. And here we go, the fully transformed Mecha Godzilla, looking amazing. Now, earlier I said not to rotate the piece of the neck, because first time I did this, the neck got stuck and I had a miserable time trying to get it out because I was aware of the chest panels breaking easily. Speaking of chest panels, the panels are die cast while these things are regular plastic. Not good. All the chest pieces should have been die cast. Also, people don't like to attach the tail, which I can see why. But for me, I do because of better security to reduce breakage. As far as I know, the chest panels are the only pieces on this figure that are prone to breaking easily. And Bandai really should have went back to the drawing board to make sure that some of the pieces wouldn't break easily. It's almost like this figure was rushed in that regard. And for the price point, hell no. Anyway, let's take a look at the fully combined Mecha Godzilla. Looks wise, it is a very menacing mechanical beast. The paint, as said before, is very clean, though admittedly, a wash would have helped bring out the looks, but to each their own. The head sculpt is very nice, menacing sculpt and reminiscent of the show at Mechagodzilla in terms of looks. The neck vent is a cool, rigid sculpt. The panels on the chest are nice and smooth and do pass off as robotic pecs. The arms are nice and smooth, and the missile fingers is a very nice, dangerous look when transformed. At least in my own personal opinion. The waist is also pretty cool, and the yellow tip right here is a very nice metallic yellow. The legs are a very blocky sculpt and slightly segmented. The boosters are visible on the thighs of Mechagodzilla and looks pretty cool. And the kneecaps have the little guns on them and it makes them look more equipped for battle. The toes are all missiles and definitely make him look more ferocious. The dorsal plates are very sharp and do a good job at capturing the vicious look. As well as the tail. The tail is a segmented sculpt that again is very sharp. So looks wise, in the transformed state, definitely win some points. For the size, to the top of his head, he's a bit over 7 inches, and to the top of the wingtips, he's just about 9 inches. This figure does pack a lot of size, so here are some size comparisons. Here he is with the SH Monstrats Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. Here he is with the SH Monstrats Super Mecha Godzilla and Space Godzilla. Here he is with the SH Monstrats Gigan and Destroya. Here he is with the SH Monstrats King Ghidorah and Martha. And finally, here he is with the Arai no Yoshi Poster Godzilla 1993 version. Like I said, Mechagodzilla is very big, so be sure to have some shelf room if you're going to get this big guy. 
technically the only thing besides the flight stand is a manga, which basically shows how this figure came to be. Now because copyright, I'm not going to show the full book, but I honestly think this is a nice inclusion. And it's pretty cool to see how this figure was even in production. Much better than a stupid card. So, buy, don't buy, or wait for a sale. I do think Bandai d delivered the goods for the most part, but this figure is way too expensive for his own good. Not to mention Bandai really did not do a good job to make sure this figure was secure to make sure it wouldn't break easily. And because the chest plates break easily if you're not careful with this, this figure really should have been $150. And that's being generous. Realistically speaking, this figure should have been $135. So what I'm saying is, do not pick this figure up for full price. Get it for sale. If you're careful with this figure and get it for a good price, you'll enjoy them just as much as I am. With that being said, the fragile chest plates hurt this figure quite a bit. So to be brutally honest, I'm giving this figure a 7.5 out of 10. Well, that's it. Thanks guys and gals so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you would like to be updated on when new videos goes up, be sure to subscribe. If you want to be notified when new videos go live, be sure to hit that bell icon. And if you want some behind the scenes stuff, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Link to it is down below. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.